Hello, my name is Trag Shah. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the American Brachytherapy Society Virtual Platform. And today I'll be discussing the recent publication from the ABS looking at quality measures and metrics for brachytherapy. This was a multi-institutional consensus statement put together by thought leaders on various brachytherapy techniques and, techniques and disease sites. As an introduction, we understand that brachytherapy plays a key role in the management of different cancers. It can be used definitively as in prostate cancer, adjuvantly uh, in breast cancer and sarcoma, and in conjunction with external beam with cervical cancer, for example. It's important to have quality assurance metrics with procedural techniques such as brachytherapy to ensure that patients are getting the best care possible. And with such QA programs and metrics, you can ensure quality and safety. Additionally, alternative payment models, including the CMS ROAPM, which has had brachytherapy recently excluded from it, has put a focus on value as well as quality metrics. Therefore, the goal of this consensus paper was to provide standardized quality measures and metrics for QA programs and potentially for alternative payment models in the future. The first disease site the manuscript it covers is breast cancer. Um, and with respect to breast cancer, partial breast irradiation is a well-studied technique. Partial breast can be delivered with interstitial or applicator brachytherapy as well as external beam radiation. With respect to interstitial brachytherapy, the dose and fractionation regimens include 34 gray and 10 fractions twice daily, 32 and eight twice daily, as well as 30.2 to 36.4 gray in seven fractions twice daily. Typically the volumes include 1.5 to 2.5 centimeters around the cavity with the CTV and the PTV and PTV eval being the same. With respect to applicator brachytherapy, dose and fractionation is more commonly 34 and 10 or 32 and eight with a one centimeter expansion around the applicator or device. And we typically limit this half a centimeter from the skin or beyond breast tissue posteriorly. The manuscript also provides quality measures including multidisciplinary evaluation, as well as the use of guidelines to help identify patients appropriate, as well as dosimetric guidelines for each brachytherapy partial breast technique. With respect to cervical cancer, brachytherapy is a key component in the definitive management of cervical cancer, and that can include a tandem and ring, tandem and ovoids, a hybrid or an interstitial implant. Following surgery for cervical cancer, adjuvant radiation therapy can include a vaginal cylinder in the setting of a positive vaginal margin. The consensus recommends 3D image-based brachytherapy with CT or MRI, as this has been associated with improved outcomes and reduced toxicities. With respect to dose and fractionation, there are multiple regimens with respect to HDR as well as LDR brachytherapy with a total goal of roughly 80 to 90 gray. The quality measures include multidisciplinary evaluation as well as use of brachytherapy in patients with stage one to four A with cured intent and to try to complete radiation therapy within eight weeks when appropriate and possible. Dosimetric constraints for the target volumes as well as the rectum bladder sigmoid are provided as well. With respect to endometrial cancer, brachytherapy is commonly used as adjuvant therapy or in the setting of medically inoperable patients. With respect to adjuvant treatment following surgery, options include observation, brachytherapy, or external beam with or without brachytherapy. In the setting of a vaginal cuff recurrence, having not previously received radiation, treatment is commonly external beam radiation as well as brachytherapy. While in the inoperable setting, brachytherapy alone or in combination with EBRT can be considered. With regards to quality measures, a multidisciplinary evaluation was recommended along with the vagin vaginal examination prior to ensure that the cuff is healed, also to allow for assessment of the size of the cylinder. CT simulation was recommended to ensure adequate placement of the vaginal cylinder and to ensure no major air gaps with a target volume of the proximal two to four centimeters of the vagina. Dose and fractionation regimens in the adjuvant setting include 21 grain, three fractions prescribed to five millimeters, 30 grain, five fractions to the surface. In conjunction with EBRT regimens of five to six gray for two to three fractions have been recommended. The quality measures and metrics include similar DVH constraints for normal organs as well as target coverage. For prostate cancer, radiation therapy is a standard of care in the management of prostate cancer. It can be used as monotherapy. It can be used, brachytherapy can also be used in conjunction with external beam depending on the risk group. With respect to monotherapy, it's primarily recommended for patients with low or favorable intermediate risk prostate cancer with doses dependent on the isotope chosen. There's no difference in outcomes or toxicities between radionucleotides and post-operative imaging and dosimetry is essential. MRI can be useful in the assessment of patients undergoing prostate brachytherapy. 
With regards to high dose rate prostate brachytherapy, ultrasound, CT, and MRI are all techniques that have been used with a range of dose and fractionation. Of note, single fraction HDR has been associated with increased rates of biochemical failure. With regards to brachytherapy boost in prostate cancer, this is primarily reserved for unfavorable intermediate to very high risk patients and has been shown in studies to improve biochemical failure as compared to external beam, though this may come at the cost of increased toxicities. Dose and fractionation by isotope as well as for HDR are presented. These are the quality measures and metrics. Multidisciplinary evaluation is recommended uh, with DVH parameters for target coverage as well as organs at risk provided for LDR brachytherapy. These provide constraints by isotope for iodine, palladium, and cesium implants. With regards to skin cancer, there are multiple techniques available to treat non-melanoma to skin cancer, with brachytherapy a well-established technique. There are many dose and fractionation regimens available to deliver skin brachytherapy, with regimens based on location, size, and histology available. With regards to setup, the first part of setting up a skin cancer brachytherapy case is to mark out the GTV clinically and to minimize air gaps depending on the technique. With regards to applicator brachytherapy, we use these for typically superficial lesions no more than three to four millimeters in depth with a regular flat surface. The CTV for a basal cell can be five to 10 millimeters and seven to 20 millimeters for a squamous cell with a PTV added on top. With regards to molds and flaps, these are typically for larger lesions up to five millimeters in depth with a CTV expansion of 10 millimeters and the CTV and the PTV being the same. Interstitial brachytherapy is primarily used to obtain greater depth coverage with similar volumes of molds and flaps. Electronic brachytherapy has emerged as a technique to deliver skin cancer radiation therapy. However, at this time, current guidelines re recommend further study before this be used off trial. With regards to quality measures and metrics for skin brachytherapy, a multidisciplinary evaluation is recommended with discussions of applicators, molds, and flaps, and interstitial as previously discussed. With regards to contraindications of brachytherapy, bone invasion, clinical perineural spread, invasion beyond subcutaneous fat or orbital involvement, and genetic conditions that may lead to high risks of side effects or contraindications. Within the metrics, dose and fractionation regimens by technique are provided along with volumetric constraints. With regards to sarcoma, radiation is a standard approach. It can be delivered preoperatively, postoperatively as well. Brachytherapy can be delivered as monotherapy, primarily for low-risk sarcomas or in the setting of recurrence with previous external beam. Brachytherapy can also be used as a boost in high-risk patients, which are larger tumors, close positive margins, or a recurrence with no previous RT. With regards to dose and fractionation for monotherapy, we typically use 30 to 54 gray and 2 to 4 gray fractions, or LDR 45 to 50 gray. With regards to boost, about 12 to 20 gray for HDR and LDR 15 to 25 gray. Quality measures include multidisciplinary evaluation with orthopedic oncologist, medical oncologist, or radiation oncologist, or the multidisciplinary tumor ward, with dosimetric guidelines provided for not only target coverage, but as well as the skin, bone, blood vessels, and nerves. Finally, we'll discuss uveal melanomas. Plaque brachytherapy is commonly utilized in the management of uveal melanomas with local control of 70 to 96%. Side effects of plaque brachytherapy include decrease in visual acuity, cataracts, vitreous hemorrhage, neovascular glaucoma, radiation maculopathy, optic nerve atrophy, and retinopathy. We most commonly use iodine-125 for these implants, but other eye scopes can be used. With regards to quality measures and metrics, we recommend multidisciplinary evaluation with use of brachytherapy per current guidelines for stage T1 to T4, we typically recommend a dose of 70 gray or more to the apex, typically overall 85 gray. And the prescription point should be at the tumoric apex or point of maximal thickness with the prescription isotope slide covering the entire tumor. At this time, I'd like to thank you for listening to this discussion of the ABS guidelines for quality measures and metrics.